Hey, I'm Pops, and I want to talk about School Spirits, right? It's a new show on Paramount+, Plus. obviously a YA show. But, you know, coming off the heels of Wednesday, I thought maybe we should give this a chance. Obviously, some of you are going to recognize uh, the actress here. She's from Cobra Kai. That's right. That's Peyton Liz Tori from Cobra Kai. She's the lead actress. She plays Maddie. And Paramount is full of extremes, right? For every... Tulsa King, we get a Star Trek Discovery. For every mayor of Kingstown, you know, we get, oh, geez, we get all sorts of crazy stuff, right? But we got the first three episodes. We got a pretty good idea of what to expect. This is going to allegedly be a graphic novel because created by Megan and Nate Trinrud. Trinrud, I think is how you say their name. And it's an interesting concept that she's, Maddie is stuck in the afterlife where she was murdered, which is in the high school. So what she finds out is everyone that has died on the school grounds are trapped in the school grounds. So you have people that date back to the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. It's all played for some different uh, moments of levity, but also the severity of questions about the afterlife and your purpose, who are really your friends and not because people can't see her, those kinds of things. That's pretty much the premise. And then it kind of unravels around that teen drama and the mystery so spoilers ahead because there's really not a way to talk about the show without going into it because it's a mystery uh, we don't really get anything of any major significance but you do need to understand that they do hit on really kind of some of the cliches of today we get a little dose of the school announcing maddie's death talking about that she's missing at that point right she's just she's just missing and then they immediately cut to the cheer squad and you're just like what like, and even Maddie is very confused. She has an escort. His name is uh, Charlie, right? And that's Charlie on, uh, he's not, he's not in this photo. So Charlie is um, a young gay black kid from the night. I'm sorry, a young gay kid from the nineties. Who's who was murdered because he left his EpiPen at home and they serve French fries that were cooked in peanut oil. So there's a couple jokes at his expense, but he's her escort, Right. And there's quirky little moments that work well. And then there's other moments that don't, you know, don't really kind of hit. And you're dealing with Maddie. You're kind of following Maddie around and her different relationships with someone like with, with Charlie most of the time. Uh, the people in the photo there, um, the one on the left is Simon. That is her closest friend in our world. She has two real friends, Nicole and Simon. And Simon is extremely emotional about her passing. And she had a little boyfriend. His name is Xavier. And Simon never liked Xavier. Simon's basically the nerd in this situation. And for some reason, Simon can see and hear her a couple times, right? You don't quite understand how that's going to work. It hasn't happened with the other passings, the other characters. And it is something interesting because now you have sort of a link between the afterlife into the present. Character on the right is one of the several that are deceased. His name is Wally, 1980s athlete, that kind of thing. Okay. And we go through a, a journey where, you know, the teen drama has to deal with, you know, like the first instance, uh, you have, you actually have school classes. So you have flashbacks to what happened when Maddie was alive right up to her death and what's happening now as they're witnessing different things that are unpacking. So you have a moment where, you know, she's in the school class and the boyfriend takes the phone out of her bag well it turns out he's cheating on her so he was trying to delete the text but now the police want him involved because they don't know why he had the phone or what's going on and then you have the ghost side where they're like going to the teacher's lounge they're making jokes about you know their sex lives and what's going on that kind of thing right and like i said you have cringy moments right so charlie thinks it's funny or cool to go hang out in their quote office which is the boys locker room the showers and they're just oogling over you know, he's oogling over the naked dudes, which I thought was really like a major messaging problem. I thought this was the whole homophobia thing that you guys on the alphabet side said that you don't do. You're gay. You're gay. You know who's gay. You have gaydar, that whole thing. And then like the, it's it's insensitive for people to not want to shower with someone. I'm like, I, I thought the scene was very inappropriate relative to the messaging that has been the way this whole time. They try to play it off like for gags, but just saying. You don't get to pick and choose your battles, folks. So 
their sequences where Maddie is testing how far outside the perimeter she can go, how trapped she is in the school. She's going through the system of understanding who some of the other different characters are. So there's one named Rhonda. She's sort of like, she's the jaded cynic. She has lollipops all the time. She was murdered by her guidance counselor. You have this uh, guy running this sort of like afterlife therapy sessions. And it's like coming to grips with what's going on. Uh, you have the 1970s chick. She just sits on a locker. She's really whacked out of her mind. You have marching band kids that just kind of march in a circle. They're these morons that do this kind of thing. They're kind of mocked, right? And then as you move through the, the these episodes, you also have things that I didn't like where they, they, quote, boost the donuts out of the teacher's lounge, but they can't touch and stuff. Like, I don't, not everything was really well explained for me. Maybe I missed something. Uh, but the show completely relies on the great performance of the cast. And I have to be honest, Peyton List, who was, I thought, very underrated as Tori. Um, she, her character was one of the ones that I think I liked and was most consistent over all of Cobra Kai that I have seen. I think that uh, uh, Christian Flores, who plays Simon, I think he is fantastic. He has a lot of emotional range. There's scenes where he he, he, you know, he rages, where he cries. You see him, you know, embarrassed. You, you really see some good range with him. You see a lot of interesting things. And I think the misfit afterlight thing plays well because they have an excuse on why they might have people from different generations, people who dress differently, talk differently, interact differently, even though they're still all kids. It's because of, of the situation. And, and I have to be honest, this supernatural premise of this, that the afterlife is high school. Like high school is the best time of your life, right? But when you die, you end up getting trapped there is a really interesting concept. And I'm not saying that it's going to play out great, not saying the show is really for you, but I can say that it is not the worst thing in the world. We're off to a pretty interesting start. And I will say that I have enjoyed what I have seen so far. So I will try to get through some more episodes as they kind of drop. We'll see how it goes. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Are you even interested in giving YA type shows a shot? I don't know. That's me. So there you are. I'm Pops. 